Welcome back to Pristis Concrete Structures. This is the second lecture of module 3 on analysis of members. Today we are starting the analysis of members under flexure. We shall learn the analysis at service loads based on three concepts. The first one is based on stress concept. Next based on force concept and finally we shall learn the analysis based on load balancing concept. Analysis of members under flexure. Last time we studied the analysis of members under axial load. Now similar to members under axial load, the analysis of members under flexure refers to the evaluation of the following. First, the permissible pre-stress based on allowable stresses at transfer. Second, stresses under service loads. These are compared with allowable stresses under service conditions. Third, ultimate strength. This is compared with the demand under factored loads. And fourth, the entire load versus deformation behavior. That means to summarize that what do we mean by analysis for pre-stressed concrete members. The first one is the analysis at transfer. Based on the permissible stresses at transfer, we can determine how much pre-stressing force we can apply, what is the maximum limit of the pre-stressing force. The next is the analysis at the service load stage where we find the stresses due to the pre-stressing force and the service loads and we need to make sure that the stresses are within the allowable values for service conditions. Third, we find out the strength and this ultimate strength is compared with the demand under factored loads. Finally, we may study the load versus deformation behavior which is the entire curve and this behavior gives an idea how a member deforms with the increasing load. Now in this lecture we shall cover the analysis under service loads and at transfer. Both these are of similar type, these are based on elastic analysis. In our next few lectures, we shall study the analysis at ultimate and we shall briefly touch upon the load versus deformation behavior. The load versus deformation behavior for a member under flexure is determined based on the moment versus rotation curve. We shall not go into the details of it, we shall just understand it to understand the behavior of priestess concrete members. Thus, the analysis at transfer under service loads and factored loads will be presented separately. The evaluation of the load versus deformation behavior will not be covered in this presentation. The assumptions of analysis of members under flexure. The analysis of members under flexure considers the following. First, plane sections remain plane till failure. This is the basic assumption 
of beams under flexure and this is known as the Bernoulli's hypothesis. Based on this, we draw the strain diagram which is linear across the depth of a section at any point in the complete load versus deformation behavior. That means we assume that this assumption plane sections remaining plane is valid till the failure of the member. The second assumption is perfect bond between concrete and pre-stressing steel for bonded tendons. For pre-tension members and for post-tension members which are grouted, we assume a perfect bond between the concrete and the steel which means there is a strain compatibility between these two materials. The strain in the concrete at the level of the steel is equal to the change in the strain in the pre-stressing tendons. And earlier we had seen that we can express this strain condition in terms of the strains in the two materials. We also use the principles of mechanics. There are three principles of mechanics involved in the analysis. First is the equilibrium of internal forces with the external loads. The compression in concrete which will be represented at C is equal to the tension in the tendon which will be represented as T. This C is equal to T. This is the first equilibrium equation and the second is the couple of C and T is equal to the moment due to the external loads. This is the moment equilibrium equation. The compatibility of the strains in concrete and in steel for bonded tendons is the second principle that we use. The formulation also involves the first assumption of plane sections remaining plane after bending. That means we are able to relate the strain in the pre-stressing tendon with the strain in the extreme compressive fiber of the concrete. See there are two assumptions here. One is plane sections remaining plane which gives us the strain distribution along the depth and the second assumption is the strain compatibility between the concrete and the steel at the level of the steel. With these two assumptions, we are able to relate the strain in the pre-stressing tendon with the strain in the concrete at the extreme compressive fiber and this gives us the compatibility equation. For unbounded tendons, the compatibility is in terms of the deformation. It is not in terms of the strain at a particular point but it is in terms of the deformation of the overall member. And the third considered relationship is the relationships which relate the stresses and strains in the materials. This is the third principles of mechanics. Last time we had seen the variation of the stresses and strains for the concrete, the pre-stressing steel and the non pre stress reinforcement if there is any and we can express those variations in terms of those equations and those equations are called the constitutive relationships of the materials. Now one interesting feature of pre stress concrete which makes it different from the reinforced concrete is the variation of the internal forces. In reinforced concrete members under flexure, the values of compression in concrete and tension in the steel increase with increasing external load. The change in the lever arm which is represented as Z is not large. So in reinforced concrete what happens that when we increase the load, both the values of C and T increase. Whereas the lever arm between the C and T, it does not increase appreciably. It stays more or less in the same value. 
Whereas in pre stress concrete members under flexor, at transfer of pre stress, C is located close to T. That means after the pre stress has been transferred, the compression and tension are at the same location. The couple of C and T may balance only the self weight. There may be a slight lever arm between them, which is to balance the self weight of the member. But at service loads, as the load is increased from the self weight, C shifts up and the lever arm Z gets large. The variation of C or T is not appreciable. That means, unlike reinforced concrete, in pre stressed concrete, as the load increases, the values of C and T does not change appreciably within the service load range. It is the lever arm Z which changes appreciably. The following figure explains this difference schematically for a simply supported beam under uniform load. On the left side, we see a reinforced concrete beam with a small load say W1. C1 is equal to T1 and the lever arm between them which is Z1 that multiplied times either of C1 or T1 gives me the moment at that particular section. Now, once this load is increased from W1 to W2, we find that Z1 is almost close to Z2, but C2 has increased from C1, T2 has increased from T1. That means, in reinforced concrete members, the forces increase, whereas the lever arm does not increase appreciably. Whereas, on the right hand side, for a pre stressed member, for a small load W1, there is a small lever arm between the compression and the tension. As the load is increased to W2, the lever arm has increased, whereas the forces have not changed much. That means, C2 is almost equal to C1. Similarly, T2 is almost equal to T1, whereas Z2 is appreciably larger from Z1. This is a unique difference between the reinforced concrete and the priestess concrete members. To summarize, in reinforced concrete member, the forces in the concrete and in the steel increase with increasing load. The lever arm does not change appreciably, whereas in priestess concrete members, the forces C and T does not increase much up to the service loads whereas the lever arm increases as the load is increased. The analysis at transfer and under service loads are similar. The methods are explained only for the service loads, because at transfer the only difference is at transfer the moment acting is the self wet whereas at service loads, the moment acting is the self weight plus the superimposed dead load and live load. Otherwise, the analysis for both the stages are similar, it is based on the elastic analysis. Hence, only the analysis for service loads is being shown here. The analysis for transfer is just same, where we just need to substitute the moment due to self weight in place of the moment due to service loads. A pre stressed member usually remains uncracked under service loads. Now, this helps us in our analysis. We take advantage of the full cross section. We assume that the concrete and steel are treated are elastic materials. The principle of superposition is applied. And the increase in stress in the tendon due to bending is neglected. These assumptions are basic for a pre stressed 
concrete member, that first of all we are assuming that both concrete and the steel of the tendons, they are remaining elastic within the service load range. Once the member is uncracked, the full section is utilized. We calculate the section properties for the full cross section and we do not consider any increase of the stress in the tendon due to the increase in the load within the service range. Next, we are learning the analysis of members under flexure under service loads. As we had known before that there are three approaches to analyze a pre-stressed concrete member at service loads. First, it is based on stress concept. Second, it is based on the force concept and the third, it is based on load balancing concept. The following material explains the three concepts. First, we are studying the analysis based on stress concept. In this approach, the stresses at the edges of the section under the internal forces in concrete are calculated. The stress concept is used to compare the calculated stresses under the allowable stresses. So one of the primary purpose of the analysis of members under service loads is to find out the stresses in the concrete in the extreme fibers. And for this purpose, we take an approach which is based on calculating the stresses in the concrete depending on the compression that acts in the concrete. We directly calculate the stresses and we compare the stresses in the extreme fibers with the allowable stresses under service conditions. That is, this approach is based on calculating the stresses directly. The following figures show the stresses in a simply supported beam under a uniformly distributed load and pre-stressed with constant eccentricity along its length. We are considering a beam which is simply supported under a uniformly distributed load. For simplicity, the centroid of the steel is considered to be at constant eccentricity throughout the length of the member. For this beam, the stress diagrams at a particular section are as follows. At any particular section, we are identifying the internal forces that are acting in the concrete. The first one is the pre-stressing force which is being transferred by the tendon to the concrete and it is compressive. The second is the moment which is acting due to the weight over the beam. Remember that at service loads, M includes the moment due to self wet and the moment due to the service loads. Now once we have identified the internal forces acting in the concrete, next we are finding out the stresses due to these forces. The first one is a uniform compressive force that is generated by the pre-stressing force. This is represented as minus P by A. That means the first component is a uniform compressive force due to the pre-stressing force applied by the tendon. The second one is a varying stress due to the eccentricity of the pre-stressing force from the centroid of the concrete section. This varying stress is given by the flexure equation which is plus minus P times E which is the moment of the pre-stressing force about the CGC times Y which is the distance at any point in the section 
from the CGC divided by I which is the moment of inertia of the cross section. This is the stress due to the moment created by the eccentricity of P about the CGC. Note that the stress is compressive at the bottom when the CGS is below the CGC and this stress is considered to be negative whereas the stress above the CGC is tensile or which is denoted as plus. That means when the CGS is located below the CGC, the stress due to the moment of the pre-stressing force about CGC is compressive at the bottom and tensile at the top. The third component is the stress due to the external moment m. Here also the stress is given as moment times the distance from the CGC divided by the moment of inertia I. For this moment the stress at the bottom is tensile and the stress at the top is compressive. Note the difference between the stresses created by the moment of the pre-stressing force and the moment due to external loads. For the moment due to pre-stressing force the stress is tensile at the top and compressive at the bottom whereas for the moment due to external loads the stress is compressive at the top and tensile at the bottom. Now once we have this three components of the stresses by the principle of superposition we can add them up and get the resultant stress profile about a section. If a section is designed as a type 1 member then there will be a resultant compression throughout the depth of the section at any location of the beam and the stress profile will appear something like this on the right. That means there will be a higher compression at the top and a lower compression at the bottom. If we design the section for a type 2 member then there can be tensile stress under the characteristic service loads at the bottom and if we design a member as a type 3 member then there will be tensile stress at the bottom as well as there may be cracking under the characteristic service loads. Thus once we have identified the stress components due to the forces in the concrete which is which are the P and M we can write an expression of the stress in the concrete for any depth in the section and at any location in the beam. This expression is equal to minus P by A which is the first component the uniform stress due to P then plus minus P E Y by I where plus is for the region above CGC and minus is for the region below the CGC and the third component is plus minus MY by I here plus is for the region below the CGC and minus is for the region above the CGC. Hence this expression is a general expression of the stress in the concrete at any point along the depth of a section and at any location along the span of the beam. We shall use this expression frequently to check the stresses in a concrete under surface loads. The second concept is based on the force concept. Here this approach is analogous to the study of reinforced concrete. The tension in pre-stressing steel and the resultant compression in concrete are considered to balance the external load. 
That means in this concept, we are not calculating the stresses directly. We are more interested in the forces that are generated in the concrete and in the pre-stressing tendon. And we write the equilibrium equation in terms of the forces. The first equilibrium is the axial force equilibrium that C is equal to T and the second equilibrium is the equation is the moment equilibrium equation where C or T times the lever arm is equal to the moment due to the external loads. The force concept is used to determine the dimensions of a section and to check the service load capacity. That means the stress concept we are using to check the stresses whereas the force concept is used in selecting the dimensions of a member when we are designing a member and also we can use it to check the service load capacity of a member. If we calculate the stresses based on this approach, then they will come out to be same as those calculated based on stress concept. That means the final result of the stresses based on the stress concept or based on the force concept are same. That means it is both the concepts will give the same values of the stresses in the concrete and those stresses at the extreme edges are compared with the allowable stresses under service conditions. This figure shows the internal forces in the section. Right at pre-stressing, the compression coincides with the tension if we are neglecting the self-weight. If there is some self-weight, then the compression will be slightly above the tension. Now, at service loads after loading, compression and the tension remain same almost, but the compression shifts above tension and the lever arm that is generated helps in balancing the moment due to the external loads. We are designating the eccentricity of the tension which is same as the eccentricity of the pre-stressing tendon by E and we are designating the eccentricity of the compression from the CGC by the symbol E subscript C. That means here we are having two eccentricities. The one is the eccentricity of the tension which is represented as E and the second is the eccentricity of the compression which is represented as E subscript C. The equilibrium equations are the first one is equal to C is equal to T which is the force equilibrium equation along the axis of the member. The second equilibrium equation is equal to M is equal to C times Z or it can be written as T times Z and Z is a summation of the eccentricities of the tension and the compression. That means we can write M is equal to C times E C plus E. This is the equation which relates the moment due to external loads with the moment that is generated by the internal forces. The resultant stress at a point in concrete are given by the following equation. Here when we are trying to find out the stress in the concrete, we are interested only in the compression that acts in the concrete. Remember that T acts in the tendon whereas C acts in the concrete and we are calculating the position of C at service loads which is given by the eccentricity EC and then the stress due to C in the concrete is given as minus C by A plus minus C times EC times Y divided by I. Now here under service loads since C is above the CGC, it creates compression at the top and for any region above CGC, 
we shall take negative value in the expression and for any region below the CGC we shall take a positive value which means a tension due to the moment of C about CGC. Now the expression that we had seen based on the stress concept and the expression that we have seen based on the force concept both this gave the same values of the stress. To prove that let us substitute C is equal to P that means the compression is equal to the pre stressing force and C times E C which is the moment due to C that is equal to M minus P E. This we have written from the moment equilibrium equation. Earlier we had seen M is equal to C times E C plus E from that equation we can write C times E C is equal to M minus C times E or equal to M minus P times E. Now once we substitute this expression of C and the expression of C times E C in the expression of the stress based on the force concept we derive the same expression of the stress as we had got based on the stress concept. That means the stress is equal to minus P by A plus minus P times E times Y divided by I plus minus M times Y divided by I. Thus the stress based on the stress concept and the stress based on the force concept should come out to be same. The next approach that we are learning is based on the load balancing concept. This is a very unique concept for pre-stressed concrete members. This approach is used for a member with curved or herbed tendons and in the analysis of indeterminate continuous beams. The moment upward thrust and upward deflection which is the camber due to the pre stress in the tendons are calculated. The upward thrust balances part of the superimposed load. Now this approach based on the load balancing concept is used for a curved tendon or for a herbed tendon. We calculate the moment that is generated by the pre stressing force within the section. We calculate the upward thrust that is generated in the section due to the curved profile of the tendon and also we calculate the upward deflection which is the camber due to this upward thrust. The upward thrust balances part of the external load which acts downwards and hence this concept is called the load balancing concept. The expressions for three profiles of tendons in simply supported beams are shown. For a parabolic tendon we are drawing the free body diagram of concrete. The tendons apply a pre stressing force at an inclination at the ends at the anchorage location and since the tendon is curved there is an upward reaction from the tendon onto the concrete and this is called the upward thrust or which is represented as W times U W with subscript U P. This upward load W up is constant for a parabolic tendon. Now if we are interested in the bending moment diagram due to this upward thrust then it is similar to a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load. It is a parabolic moment diagram and the expression is also same as a simply supported beam under the uniformly distributed load. The moment at the center due to the uniform upward thrust WUP 
is given by this equation m is equal to w u p l square by 8 this expression is same as what we have learned in our structural analysis of simply supported beams under uniformly distributed load the only difference is the sign of the moment is different here the moment is considered to be negative since the beam is lifting up whereas for a conventional simply supported beam the moment is considered to be positive since the beam sags down. The moment at the center from the pre stressing force is also given as m is equal to p times e. What we had seen earlier based on the forces in the section that whenever the p is acting at an eccentricity with the CGC there is a moment due to p and this moment is given as p times e. Now the expression of the moment that we have calculated based on the upward thrust and the expression of the moment that comes from the eccentricity of the pre stressing force we can equate this and try to find out the expression of the upward thrust. The expression of W U P is calculated by equating the two expressions of M. The upward deflection delta is calculated from W U P based on elastic analysis. That means W U P is equal to 8 P E by L square. This expression we have got by equating M is equal to W U P L square by 8 equal to P times E and the expression for delta, delta is equal to 5 W U P L 4 by 384 E I. This expression we have got from basic structural analysis of a beam under uniformly distributed load. Here the uniformly distributed load is upwards which is represented as W U P and hence the deflection is also upwards which is known as camber due to pre stressing and the camber is given as W 5 times W up times L 4 divided by 384 times the modulus times the moment of inertia. And here E is the eccentricity and uh, sorry the capital E is the modulus of the concrete. Next we are learning the load balancing concept for a singly herbed tendon. For a singly herbed tendon there is one bend at the center and at that bend that since the tendon wants to straighten out it applies a reaction in the concrete which is a single load with acting upwards. And the moment diagram which we can draw from the free body diagram of the concrete is a triangular shape. It is similar to the moment diagram of a simply supported beam under a central point load. The only difference is here the moment is negative because the beam tries to bend upwards. There are two expressions of the moment, one based on the central point load where m is equal to w u p times l by 4 and the second expression of m is equal to p times e. Once we equate these two expressions of m, we get an expression of w up which is equal to 4 times P times E divided by L. And we can also calculate the upward deflection or the camber from the structural analysis formula. Delta is equal to W up times L cube divided by 48 times E times I. And here E is the modulus of concrete. Next, the load balancing concept for a doubly herbed tendon. Here, 
there are two hold down points which are symmetrically placed and the distance of one harping point is represented as a times the total length l and since the harping points are symmetric the upward loads at these two points are also same the moment diagram has a linearly increasing part at the two ends and a constant value in between the two harping points this is similar to beams tested under two point loading where we have a constant moment region at the center. If we equate the two expressions of m, m is equal to w u p times a l which is derived from the moment diagram and m is equal to p times e, then we get an expression of the w up which is equal to p times e divided by a l. From the structural analysis formula, we can find out the upward deflection delta is equal to a times 3 minus 4 a square within bracket and then times w up times l cube divided by 24 e of the concrete times i of the section. Thus, we have seen the load balancing concept for three types of curved tendons. First, we had seen for a parabolic tendon, the upward thrust is a uniformly distributed load acting upwards. For a singly herbed section, the upward thrust is a single point load and for a doubly herbed section, the upward thrust are two point loads acting at the two harping points and we have been able to calculate the expressions of the upward thrust and the deflections due to the upward thrust. Next we are solving a problem, a concrete beam pre-stressed with a parabolic tendon is shown in the figure. The pre-stressing force applied is 1620 kilonewtons. The uniformly distributed load of 45 kilonewton per meter, it includes self-wet. Compute the extreme fiber stress at the mid span by applying the three concepts. Draw the stress distribution across the section at mid span. Here, the beam is a simply supported beam with a parabolic tendon. The externally applied load is 45 kilonewtons per meter which is uniformly distributed and includes the self wet. If we see the sections at the end, the CGS is located at the CGC and at the center, the CGS is at an eccentricity of 145 millimeters from the CGC. The span of the beam is 7.3 meters. First we are solving this problem by the stress concept. We are finding out the geometric properties. The area of the concrete is 500 times 750 which is 375000 millimeter square. The moment of inertia is given as the breadth times depth cube divided by 12 which is equal to 1.758 times 10 to the power 10 millimeter 4. The bending moment at mid span due to the external loads is given as m equal to 45 times 7.3 square by 8. This is w times l square divided by 8 which is equal to 299.7 kilonewton meters. Now based on the stress concept, the top fiber stress is given as Fc with subscript T for the top is equal to minus P by A plus Pe 
divided by i times y top minus m by i times y top. Remember that the stress due to the moment of the pre stressing force is positive at the top and the stress is positive at the top whereas the stress due to the external moment is negative at the top and accordingly we have selected the sign. Once we substitute the values of the pre stressing force its eccentricity at the center and the values of the moment the values of a i and y top we come to an value of the stress at the top which is minus 5.7 Newton per millimeter square. Second we are calculating the bottom fiber stress which is similar expression except the signs for the moment due to the pre stressing force is now negative because it creates compression at the bottom and the sign for the external moment is positive because it creates tension at the bottom for the simply supported beam and once we substitute the values of the variables we get the stress at the bottom to be minus 2.9 Newton per millimeter square. Note that the compressive stress at the bottom is numerically lower than the compressive stress at the top. The same calculations we are doing based on the force concept. Here the applied moment is equal to 299.7 kilo Newton meters. Hence the lever arm Z is given by M divided by P which is 299.7 times 10 to the power 6. The moment has been expressed in Newton millimeters divided by the pre stressing force which is expressed in terms of Newton 1620 times 10 to the power 3 which gives 185 millimeters. That means at the center the deviation of the compression from the tension is equal to 185 millimeters and that is the lever arm generated when the external load has been applied on the member. The eccentricity of the compression or the pressure line is given as E c is equal to z minus E equal to 185 minus 145 equal to 40 millimeters. That is the compression is acting at a distance of 40 millimeters above CGC. The eccentricity of the pre stressing force is 145 below CGC whereas the eccentricity of the compressive force is 40 millimeters above the CGC. If we calculate the top fiber stress by the expression F C top is given as minus C by A and minus C times E C times Y top divided by I. Here we are selecting minus for the second term because the compression creates compressive stress at the top and once we substitute the values of the quantities we get back the same number as we had seen for the stress concept and that value is minus 5.7 Newton per millimeter square. If we calculate the bottom fiber stress here we are selecting a positive for the second term because the stress generated in the concrete by the compressive force is tensile and we are substituting the value of y bottom and once we substitute the terms of the variables we here also we get the same value as per the stress concept that is equal to minus 2.9 millimeter square which is the stress at the bottom. Based on the load balancing concept first we are calculating the upward load the upward thrust which is W U P is equal to 8 P by L square. 
and once we substitute the values of p e and l the value of l is now in millimeters and we get the upward load to be 35.3 kilonewton per meter remember that we were having an external load of 45 kilonewton per meter and due to the parabolic tendon and the distressing force of 1620 kilonewtons we are having an upward thrust of 35.3 kilonewton meters that means the residual downward load is equal to WRES equal to 45 minus 35.3 which is 9.7 kilonewton meters hence what we can see is that by the load balancing concept we are able to calculate that what is the residual load that is acting on the beam which is equal to the actual load minus the upward thrust the residual bending moment is equal to MRES is equal to WRES times L square by 8 and we get a value of 64.6 kilonewton meters the residual bending stress which is the stress due to the residual bending moment is equal to m y by i and here once we substitute the values of the variables we get a value of 1.38 newton per millimeter square hence this is the bending stress which is created by the residual bending moment the total bottom fiber stress fcb is given as the uniform component by which is minus p by a and minus fc residual because in the bottom we are having a compressive stress and once we substitute this values we get a same value as that by the stress concept which is minus 5.7 newton per millimeter square the top fiber stress is given as the minus p by a plus fc res and this is equal to minus 2.9 millimeter square that means what we see is that the stress at the top is minus 5.7 newton per millimeter square and the stress at the bottom is minus 2.9 millimeter square the resultant stress distribution at mid span is shown below the compressive stress at the top is minus 5.7 newton per millimeter square and the compressive stress at the bottom is minus 2.9 millimeter square and we see that this member is subjected to compression throughout the depth of the section for the service loads thus what we have studied today is the analysis of members under flexor we first learned that we do analysis for the several load stages first we do an analysis for transfer for which we calculate the stresses at the extreme fiber and based on the allowable values we can fix how much pre-stress we can apply next we do an analysis for the service loads where we calculated the stresses under service loads and make sure that those stresses are within the allowable values for the service conditions we do an analysis for the ultimate strength and a section has should be adequate to sustain the maximum factored loads in case of an extreme event we may also do an analysis for the entire load versus deflection behavior to understand the deformation of the member with increasing load in today's lecture we studied only the analysis at transfer and service loads now both these analysis are similar they are elastic analysis the only difference is that at transfer the moment is the moment due to self-weight 
whereas at service loads the moment is due to the self wet plus the external load otherwise the expressions of the stresses is same for the two cases hence we had just studied the analysis for service loads knowing that the analysis for transfer is similar. Now the analysis for service loads can be done in three, three ways. The first one is based on stress concept. We use this approach when we are interested to find out the stresses in the extreme fibers in the concrete. The second approach is based on the force concept which is similar to the analysis of reinforced concrete members where we are interested to know the forces in the section and the moment. For the force concept we can write the equilibrium equation for the axial forces C is equal to T and the equilibrium equation for the moment where M is equal to either of C or T times the lever arm and we can use this force concept to dimension to select the dimensions of the members when we are designing a member and also we can find out the what are the service loads that can be applied on a pre-stressed member. The third concept we studied was the load balancing concept and this is applicable for a curved tendon. What we see that when the pre-stressing force is applied in a curved tendon, the tendon applies an upward thrust to the concrete member and this upward thrust balances part of the externally applied load and hence this method is called the load balancing concept. This concept is mostly used in the study of continuous indeterminate beams which we shall see later. Now although the approaches are different the final results of the stresses will be same. First we have seen this by deriving an analytical expression of the stress based on the force concept and we have seen that this expression is same as that based on the stress concept. We solved a problem of a simply supported beam with a parabolic tendon subjected to a uniformly distributed load and we calculated the stresses at the extreme fibers at mid span by the three concepts. We found that the values of the stresses are same based on the three concepts. We have also observed that for a type 1 member when there is compression throughout the section under service loads the stress profile will be such that there will be higher compression at the top and lower compression at the bottom. Thus today we studied the analysis of members at service loads. In our next class we shall study some particular definitions for the analysis under service loads and then we shall move on the analysis under for the ultimate strength. Thank you.